Oh, it looks good. All right, Tim, what are we doing out here today? Well, we got some parts here. Yep. Got a couple boxes over here. But, four seater has got upgraded control arms, it's got upgraded radius rods. It's uh, got axle shafts. Yeah, it's got axle shafts. It's uh, time for some trailering arms. Okay. Um, other than trailering arms, I have tie rods that haven't been upgraded. Everything else, I think, is pretty much on, on the suspension has been upgraded. So, today, we got some Super Duty. Or... <laughs> Super Duty. Super Duty. Super ATV. Yep. Heavy Duty. High clearance trailering arms. Yep. So we're going to get rid of the stocks, mm -hmm. take them off, we're going to weigh them, we're going to compare and weigh the new ones, Okay. and uh, tell you what we think about them. Sounds good. Yeah, we've had real good luck with all their stuff so far. This machine's got a lot of Super ATV parts on it. Um, we've had real good luck with all their stuff so far. Um, you guys uh, seen a video on, on these, the axle shafts, the radius rods. Yeah, so we got Rhino 2.0s. Yep. This is uh, the second full season, or it's a season and a half, and that's probably 1,500 miles. Yeah, minimum. or better. Yeah, yeah 1,500, 2,000 miles this year, well, yeah. between this year and last year. Yeah, probably about 2,000 miles. And I haven't had new, no problems, no complaints, still tight as can be. Uh, radius rods, I mean, been crazy. You guys seen some jumps that come down pretty sideways. If it was a stock trailer, a radius rod, it would have been it for sure. Yeah. So, I can't complain. I don't have anything bad to say about it. Uh, the A-arms, uh, you guys did not see the A-arms get put on because something happened, happened on the dunes last year where... Me and the Talon collided and uh, bent, an a, bent a stock A-arm. So we went to Silverback Off-Road, and they carry Super ATV stuff. They had it in stock. Yeah, they usually carry everything right there in the store. They normally have anything you need when you break down. So went over there, and what do you know it? They had heavy-duty Super ATV control arms. Yep. And the stuff I've done, them control arms, with them nosedives, some of them nosedives I've had, them control arms would have already been in a U, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these things, they, they hold up really well. So, so, I can't say anything bad about Super ATV's parts. So, my machine's already, let's say, three quarters of the way done up with Super ATV parts. We might as well finish it out. Haven't had anything bad to say or any, any problems, so I would recommend them. I don't have any doubt in my mind. They're heavy duty. The the warranty on them you can't beat. Yeah, the warranty's really good That's on them. That's what's awesome. Even with their belts, you know, uh, they sell the the G Boost bad belt. It is an awesome belt. Uh, I recently warranted two of their belts. I literally called them. They said, "Hey, here's the email. Email me pictures." They emailed me or called me back and said, "All right, we'll have you belts out." They mailed out two belts. They were here not even 15 hours later. So warranty is awesome you want to show them these uh control arms that are still on your beat up sure they're uh they've been bashed on rocks they've been through a whole bunch of ball joints which you've seen in the last video we got those taken care of um other than that i don't have any complaints of other parts so let's open these uh trailering arms up check them out the packaging i've had a lot of parts show up here they're damaged falling out of the box Maybe sometimes the parts are missing. Packaging looks pretty good, I would have to say. Yep. Nice. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. Built for the battle. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. And we explained in the uh, earlier in the video, we did get the high clearance ones. Oh. Do you just want to set them on the floor, or what do you want to do? Ah, uh, we kick the box. All right. They are uh, stout. Yeah. Obviously, looking at pictures, they, they look very heavy duty. And uh, based off their other stuff, um, but you can't tell how much something weighs or how cheaply something is made just by a picture, though, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's another thing we're going to do, too, is we're going to throw it up on a scale just to see. I'm sure they're going to be heavier than the stockers, but uh, we just want to see just how much heavier. So we're going to go ahead and throw them up on a scale just to give you guys an idea. <laughs> that's a lot of wrap. That's good. So obviously there's some grease on here where they after powder coat tap, tapped it, but other than wiping that off, obviously that's for uh, let's see, that's for brake line. Yeah, brake line goes around the inside now. It looks yeah. like. No, these uh, <laughs> these uh, ain't no joke. It looks like it's complete end to end. Nice. Time joint. And I don't know. I was reading on. Uh, I was reading on their, they have a straight, it's not a high clearance trailering arm, but it's a heavy duty trailering arm. I think it extended the rear length an inch. I don't know that these do that or not, but uh, let's uh, let's weigh this. Okay. All right, we're going to get this up on a Hold scale. On a second. While we're here. I mean, all the welds look good. I've heard some people in the past, you know, complain about the welds, but I mean, yeah, they all look good. And you, you know, everyone's got when people when I see people complaining, you got to think that these are mass produced or these are you know these are production parts. These are not like one person individually just welding each piece. But I mean, I can't complain. No. And uh, some other companies that I looked at, I mean, you're talking eighteen hundred bucks for trailering arms. Yeah. Yep. You know, compared to six hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So. Another thing too is so we talked uh, we we did a little research on these, and the high clearance is actually a little bit stronger. So with him doing a lot of jumping and stuff like that, yeah, I was worried that this notch might make it a little bit weaker. But uh, they had some I don't know what you want to call it, proven yeah some data yep yeah proven data that the high clearance is actually stronger. So that's what we went with. I just wanted the strongest they had to offer. And uh, we've kind of filled them in on, you know. Yeah, we, we, we the preferred machine. the high clearance. It's always nice to have a little bit more clearance, whether you're pulling off a trailer or climbing up on a yeah. boulder or whatever. Especially with stock tires. Stock tires, uh, even 30-inch tires, pulling off my car trailer, I with the flat stock control arm, trailering arm, I would hit the metal edge of the trailer, and obviously it scraped it up. But my trailering arms, powder coat-wise, have seen better days. So I'm going to do my best to try to keep these nice yeah and uh you know the front control arms they had uh, silverback only had black in stock and like literally it was taken apart at the drag strip at silver lake and we rode over there in a machine and didn't think we were going to find anything and they had it and all they had was black i think so i took it and uh i'm going to go ahead and make the rear suspension and the front suspension all match this blue I'm going to do something different with the coil springs. I'm going to put the coil springs to be something different. And then obviously we still got a new cage to do this winter. We're going to do the rock sliders that I built and the front bumper all a different color. So the cage, sliders, and bumper are all going to match the suspension. Then it's going to all be a different color but match. And uh, so we're trying to get this thing dialed in for next. Get it ready for 2021. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get this prepped up. And then uh, we'll throw it up on the, the scale. We'll let you know what she weighs. All right, guys, we're starting with this first, and then we'll pull the stocker off and see what that weighs after. Well, actually, I got that old stocker that was bent from another machine. So 30 pounds. Yeah, roughly 30, 30 and pounds. 30 yeah. pounds. That's, that's, that's not bad. I mean, it's way heavier, I'm sure, than the stock one. Yeah. So let's go ahead and check that real quick. All right, so this is off of a 2020 razor that was rolled. You could already tell it's way... Way thinner metal, everything else. So wow, it's that's, gonna. That's, uh, 
12 pounds. Yep, 12 pounds a piece. No, so this one was bent. I uh, changed a set of control arms for somebody and trailering arms and some other parts, radius rods. It got rolled. We put it back together. So I had these laying out there, but it's the same exact thing. So instead of like time lapsing, then pulling it apart and weighing it, we just did it all right now. Yep. But so 18 pounds is a big difference. I mean, this is uh, thin, very thin stuff. And yeah. I'm surprised that mine's held up as long as it has. Yeah, for sure. So, and I'm thankful it has because if it broke, it'd probably be a lot worse on me, you know, or the machine. So, but just to give you guys an idea, we figured we go ahead and weigh it. But and everything's the same. It's got an eyelet here. That one had an eyelet in it. Other than that, they have nothing on it. All right, guys. So, I pulled the cotter key out of here. Sometimes, you know, over time, the nut shifts against the cotter key and, uh, you have to take a wrench or cut the end and bring it back so that you can get the cotter key out without messing up the threads when you try to back it off. But I'm ready to go ahead and pull this limit strap. You guys might not have a limit strap. You might. So obviously I can't really tell you. I don't remember what stock hardware was. So this has got an Allen on the back of here. So now I got the tension off of the shock. I can let it down the rest of the way. Okay, I can. There we go. Finally. Okay, so now the shock's loose. We can go ahead and pull a sway bar link. Sway bar. My hardware is still stock, so it should be a 15 and a 15, I believe. Yeah, so 15 and a 15 wrench. Perfect. Now, so I have our links disconnected. I'm gonna change those. I just don't have them at the moment. Let's see. We go ahead and take this axle nut out of here. And once the axle nuts out, we need to we can go ahead and pull radius rods. I suppose everything else is. That's gonna be an 18 and an 18. 18 wrench. You got a washer here too, so you don't lose that. Put it down. Set all your hardware aside. All right, so now everything's basically loose here. So, there we go. This over here. Now we need to lift this back up, and there is two 13 millimeter bolts, or there's actually four, but I need to take out two. It's always easier when you can. Get it pretty much straight to get in there. I'll grab a wrench. Yep. Yeah, sorry about the heater too. Uh, it's getting cold out here, so. Kind of chilly. Yeah. So these are the two bolts that hold your caliper bracket on. You gotta get those out. This is the tricky one. So if you're at too much of an angle, your bolt gets in the way. Yep. So there's that one. Your brakes. Now your hub. And while this is apart, you might as well grease it. Yep, obviously. might as well grease it. You can see that's pretty greasy, but and obviously I check all this all the time. Check the wheel bearings for play at least. I 
try and grease it two times a year. It might be enough, might not be enough, but it's been, these are stock wheel bearings. I think I've replaced one wheel bearing in this in, I don't know, 3,600 miles, and I think yeah. it was that one over there. So now, I guess before we go ahead and go any further, if I was just changing the radius rods, I would, wouldn't take this off. So we're gonna go ahead and do the radius rods. You need a 10 millimeter wrench, a 10 millimeter socket, there's two bolts holding this plastic cover on. And I know 17 models didn't have this. Does yours don't have this, right, Will? I don't think so. Oh, uh, you know what I just remembered? So I drilled this, I drilled this hole here. Actually, this hole was here. I just made it bigger. Okay. For my lift system to get in and out of the dunes. Luckily, last year, I only used it once or twice. Yeah, for strapping up. Hopefully, I don't have to, I don't plan on it. I plan on just parking the silver back, but. Yeah. Um, if I have to, I'll have to figure something out because my limit strap goes from the shock tower down to here and it keeps the paddles off of the ground. Yeah. Because that's another thing. We got bigger paddles. So yeah. The lift might have to go up a little bit. Yep. We'll see. Figure that out when it comes time. Okay. So there's those two. There's the nut. Put those back together. I don't know. I don't know if the brake line comes back over the top here or not. Because it, what I thought it looked like is these bolts here. We still got to take these out, but it, it looks like all this brake line bolts along the backside now. Basically, this is now out of your way. So is this. So we'll set that down. Now, there's your lower. Now, these are aftermarket radius rods, some great TV radius rods. So they have misalignment spacers, two in each. Don't want to lose those. Set those down, same thing with the top here. Pull your bolt. We're gonna have two misalignment spacers. Just go ahead and get them out of there so you don't lose them and get kicked around or something. Just set them off to the side. And uh, let's see. So now we're, we just basically just have a brake line. This axle is just sitting here. We can now set this. The other side of it. Like that. Okay, so there's that. Double plunge axles. These rhinos got double plunges. Yeah. I haven't held up really good. Point. I'm gonna go ahead and find the torques for these, and we'll be right back. All right, guys. So T25 torques. There's gonna be a bolt here, bolt here, here, and here. It'll get the brake line off. Yeah, we were discussing off camera. He's got a uh, a skid plate, yeah, on here. So, so we might hit the. I had to pull a couple bolts out of my skid plate right here because it it curves, so it's split. So luckily, I can push it down, and I think I can take it. So the bolt there is an 18 millimeter. You need an 18 millimeter box center wrench and the uh, socket, and I should be able to sneak in there. So let's uh, see if I can do that real quick. That and uh, rock sliders. Okay, so I just need to double check if there's a washer. No washer. So it's just a bolt and a nut. As you can see, those have never been out. And uh, just be ready to drop. This sucker's off. So now all we got to do is pull this spindle off or the hub here. So you've got a lot of sand in there, but the bearing itself looks good. So. Pretty sure well, that's a 15. 15 wrench. 15 socket. I'm just gonna use the gun. We already got two of the oh no, actually those two bolts may do nothing for it, so basically washer on the back, nut, and you can assemble this back on the workbench before you put the arm back in. So there's another washer and a nut. There's another one here. 
You'd think I remember all this. I just did it not uh, too long ago. Um, uh, well, you guys didn't see the machine, unfortunately, but I did a repair on somebody else's. So there's that. All right, and so these are marked. So if you take everything apart as you're putting it back together, you just got to pay attention. So this got an L here. So that, I'm going to go ahead and clean that up. And uh, before we put the brake hub back on, we're going to grease it. But that's uh, that's uh, basically it. That's I'll show you guys sliding it back together. Trailer and iron, but you can see like, it's uh, got sandblasted in these areas. And the bottoms, I mean, either from rocks or jumping off the trailer, pretty beat up, but. Not, bar not terrible. I mean, honestly, not terrible for all the things on. This still look pretty straight along here. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, because that's where, when the other machine rolled, that's where this. Yeah, it gets tweaked. Yeah, it got bent. It was yeah. making a tire walk, but let's see. Stock bushing, no play. I mean, I guess I can't complain with the mileage. Yeah. So these will be spares. I don't know, think that I'll ever go back to them for any reason. But all right, guys. So I just took a uh, the blow gun and blew away because obviously it had sand and dirt and crap here. Same thing in here. So just blow it away from the bearing. You don't want all that stuff getting pressed into the bearing because right here. These are supposed to be non-greasable bearings, but they have a slit here. So then you have your special adapter, which I'll show you in a little bit. But you blow away. Same thing in here. And then I just took a little plastic brush here and kind of just went over everything and blew it out again. So it's clean enough. Get your bolts. Make sure you got the left side. Your washer and your nut. There's that. Try not to scratch it up. All right, so we got all four of those bolts in. Um, a couple of them were a little tight with the powder coat, so you just got to kind of work them up, work them in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get all these tightened up, and we'll show you guys what's going on next. All right, so the mis you got misalignment spacers for this hind joint up here. You gotta make sure you have two of those, one on each side, and uh, we'll slide it in. Try to not scratch it up. That started, so we could. Uh, Probably go ahead and uh, do the brake line. Yeah, it's going to be on the back side there, so uh, probably the first thing that you need to get done there besides bolting it up. All right, guys, so I went ahead and bolted the brake line on. It uh, comes right along the top back side of the trailing arm. I like it. I thought it might have been lower, but it kind of holds the brake line up to where you... It keeps it out of the way, too, which is yeah, nice. Yeah, it's really out of the way. Um, I like it. Um, so then the brake line will then go below this bolt and then up and over here to here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to get this axle back in here, the misalignment spacers, and uh, these radius rods. That's what we're going to do here. Might be easier with a second set of hands. I don't know where you could find that at right about now, but... <laughs> yeah, I don't know where that is either. <laughs> Never heard of those. So bolts nuts factory come out the back so let's we always put them back on we're just trying to show the people that you can get it done by yourself oh yeah sure <laughs> you can do it by yourself i mean it's longer to record this than it is to actually do the job yeah it's actually a really simple job all right what am i looking so these are the old misalignment spacers mm -hmm. from uh, the other trailing arm. 
So I got one nut. And there's number two. So you might as well go ahead and tighten those down now. Get them out of your way. It's going to be 18 and 18. 18, 18. Okay, so that's that. So I heard before of 10 pounds. How many mullet pounds were those, would you say? <laughs> those were probably, that was probably six mullet pounds. <laughs> All right, Tim, what did we figure out? All right, so in the other box was some uh, hidden hardware, you know? <laughs> Those things might help sometimes. Some things weren't adding up. There's uh, five brake line clips going, obviously, down the trailing arm. There's only four from the factory. So the top one, I said there's a hole there. We'd have to figure that out. Well, we figured it out. So it comes with new clips. Uh, these are plastic clips. The ones that are on there from factory are metal with rubber lined. I don't see nothing wrong with these, but I already got it bolted up. So I'm going to use the factory ones. You always got some spares. All right, so everything's been going pretty good with this install until I got to this point, which it has nothing to do with Super ATV, but let me explain this. So I have, shock, I have, I have uh, Sandcraft limit straps here, and these are the bolts that came with it for stock control arm. You look here and here it's got a spacer there and this thickness and this thickness is way thicker than stock so it's a lot beefier and so this bolt that they gave is the same bolt as my original one and I knew that their bolts weren't gonna work and I knew my bolts weren't gonna work so needless to say I had to order bolts these bolts won't be here for a couple days I ordered them uh, I ordered them through what was it, Fastenal? Yeah, Fastenal. Ordered them through Fastenal, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put this thing back together without the limit straps attached at the bottom, and later on I will come back in and put them back on. But everything... Yeah, for now we're just trying to get everything buttoned up so we can get it out the door here, so... Right, right, right. Um, so other than that, I'm going to grease this real quick, show you guys how to do that, and you'll see me assemble this. Alright, so this is the grease tool. You can find these online. I don't remember what millimeter this is. I've had it for three years now. So basically, I slide that sucker in here, shake it around, and uh, get your grease gun. So you'll start seeing the, it coming out of the seams, and you'll see that it goes all the way around mm -hmm. on there. Um, So if you guys need, you know, information on maintenance on almost any razor, you can uh, reference one of our older videos. I think it's like uh, Razor Maintenance Part 1 and Part 2. It's on our channel. Uh, it's a really good video. Clutch maintenance, oil changes, diff fluids, air filters, um, things that we recommend, like that we found work good. Um, so if you're interested, check it out. Other than that, we got to put this hub back on. Do that real quick. You got to make sure you got your washer. lined up. Now you can get your cutter key through there. Let's see, I got some new ones here. And it's always nice to keep a couple of these in a bin. That way you don't have to try to reuse them. Makes life a little easier. For sure. And a little tight on the line so I'm going to have to uh, scooch the brake line down this way. 
Luckily, uh, Polaris wraps up extra brake line. It's just wrapped up right here. So all you gotta do is just pull it down a little bit further. This is basically the same length that the original one was. But Let's see if that was enough. Let me close. Yeah, see how it's a little tight right here and here, so we gotta give it a little bit more. Got this, we pulled some slack from the brake line forward, got her laying up here roughly where it should be. Let's play with it a little bit. Actually, I could probably turn this around the other way. But basically, they're all they're all tightened down through here, and you can pull some slack out of here and uh, get you enough line because there is extra line up there from factory. It's just curled up. And then it comes with this plastic clip and this bolt. Lock that down, that holds that there. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the sway bar link real quick. Okay, so that, and that comes with a new bolt. I use that bolt. And for now, I'm using uh, the shock bolts as well. Um, you got the, you got to tighten that nut up on the shock bolt if you want. Right. Make sure your brake line's out of the way back there. That's a 15 and an 18. Tightens that up. All right. So here's the last two caliper bolts. We already had one in. We had to jack it up enough to get that back in there. Those are 15s. Just tighten those up. Well, that's that. I don't know. I guess we can go ahead and do this other side and time lapse it. And uh, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Final thoughts there. Yep. You guys want an affordable set of uh, trailing arms? There you go. I mean, looking at these things too, the high clearance, I mean, we're probably gaining, I don't know, I would say so at least three inches. Lowest, so this is the lowest point right here. And this would normally just go straight to that mounting point yep. up there. I mean, so at your highest point. It's probably I mean, three or four inches. I mean, I'd, I would say, I'd say four inches probably. Yeah. So I'm glad we went with the high clearance ones here. So everything's all done. We're all Got this side buttoned up. So like we said, we're gonna go back in through later. We're gonna add these straps to it. So it'll change the bolts later on. Listen, if you guys want a dependable part, something that not gonna bend and break as easy, I think this might be it for you. I feel way more comfortable going and jumping. I haven't had any problems, but I think this is gonna just make me feel a lot better because I get to a point where you know, I'm out there jumping and it's like I, I just do the same speed and I never gain any more speed because, you know, you get out of your comfort zone and then that's when bad things happen. But I think I'll feel a lot better about getting out of that comfort zone and sending it a little bit harder with these being on here. And it's not that I just bought these products and I'm telling you about them. I've already had the control arms. I've already had the radius rods. I've already had... The axle shafts. Belts, the axle shafts, the Rhino yep. 2.0. So Super ATV has, you know, done good for me. Um, 
So if you guys want to save some money and uh, get something that I think is good quality part, this is probably your option. So we just did a giveaway not too long ago. We're going to be doing another giveaway soon. Um, what else? Yeah, so check us out on Facebook yeah, there. Check us out on Facebook. You we know, got an Instagram too. We're not as active on there, but mainly on Facebook. Yes. You know, uh, if you guys are interested in you know the giveaway, that'll be coming. So if you get on Facebook, you'll be able to see that. Um, we also do little clips here and there, just kind of messing around, goofy stuff. <laughs> yeah, the other one. The haircut. Yeah, yeah. The haircut. Going to the barber. But, um, you know, like, share, and subscribe. And uh, thanks for all your guys' support. See you next time. Thanks. Well, we just did some before times on the machine, and uh, it's time. This thing needs uh, some power. So we got the four-seater here. We're going to do head studs. Yep. Here's yeah, so all this stuff we've had opened up because I got a bunch of stuff, so we had to open up some of these boxes, so everything's been kind of sitting these. for a, couple, a week or two. I we got head studs. We got bigger injectors. Got an intake. Yep. And then you guys seen this in one of our previous videos. This is my old, my old big turbo. So obviously it's not going to have an exhaust housing on it. Okay.